Gift Biz Unwrapped, episode 378. You have to build your professional network, and one of the best ways is to do podcast guesting. Attention, gifters, bakers, crafters, and makers. Pursuing your dream can be fun. Whether you have an established business or are looking to start one now, you are in the right place. This is Gift Biz Unwrapped, helping you turn your skill into a flourishing business. Join us for an episode packed full of invaluable guidance, resources, and the support you need to grow your gift biz. Here is your host, gift biz gal, Sue Monheit. Hi there, it's Sue, and thanks for joining me today. How did this happen? It's the middle of summer, and I'm busier than ever. Isn't this the time when I should be slowing down a little bit and taking in the season? Well... I'm kind of doing that too, but I've got so many exciting new ideas to implement, and I think, why put it off? As you know, we started the bashes a few months ago, and they've been a raving success. Have you listened to one? If not, just jump back in the lineup and look for one of the shows that says bash in front of the title. So many of you are getting new customers and collaborating on new projects exactly what I was hoping would happen. And it's working. If you haven't been part of a bash yet, consider this your personal invitation to join in. You can sign up for a spot at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash bash. I have several other exciting things headed your way too. One I'd like to share with you today is a tool that I've created for you. This show is now in its eighth year. I can't even believe that. And during this time, we've covered a lot of ground. How to start and grow your business, stories from many of you who have done just that, how to choose and use social media sites, build your own website. Oh my gosh, there is so much information here for you, but not necessarily easily at your fingertips. So, I've made a tool that categorizes by topic the episodes of the show, but only the ones that stay relevant over time. Because yes, there are some shows that just don't work for us today. The world is changing so fast, right? You can use this tool to zero in on whatever topic you want information on at the moment. Do you want to hear from others in your specific industry? How about details on Pinterest or setting up an email strategy? You can now easily find the right episodes and create your priority listening roster. Consider this your Gift Biz Resource Center at a glance. To check it out, go to giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash topics. Of course, it's free. It's a Google Doc, and make sure to note at the bottom, I have five separate sections for easy reference. I've never seen another podcast do this, and I wish they would, to be quite honest. It makes listening to the shows you need at the moment so much easier. The link again is giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash topics. Interestingly enough, in today's show, we'll also be talking about podcasts. The industry has come so far since I started and just continues to grow. Which brings up the question, how may it be a fit for a product-based business? Or is it even? And if so, how do you do it? Spoiler alert here, I am not suggesting or condoning in any way that you start your own show. It would take you totally off task, for the majority of you anyway but you will hear a bit about what's behind having your own podcast. But what I'm looking forward to sharing with you today is how being a guest on someone else's show may be something to consider. We'll talk about how this can give you more exposure to your business and build your credibility, how to find podcasts and prepare to be a guest, and some other nuances along the way. Hmm, could podcast guesting be in your future? Hi there, it's Sue, and welcome to today's show. I am thrilled to be introducing you to Noemi and Gabor Barrez. 
Noemi and Gabor are the owners of Podcast Connections, a husband and wife team who have been working together for 13 years. They help entrepreneurs and business owners connect with podcast hosts to share their knowledge with the appropriate listening audiences. Gabor is dedicated to helping experts grow their business with interviews, and Noemi applies her online marketing expertise and skills in content creation and organization. Now, I'm going to tell you that they are my go-to place to find guests on the show. If ever I'm looking for somebody special by topic and I don't already have access to them in other ways, I will call Noemi and she, without fail, finds the right people. She also brings a lot of people to me. And whenever I see an email in my inbox from her, I automatically click it because I know it's going to be perfect. And you might say, well, how does that apply to me as a handmade business owner? Stay tuned. Noemi and Gabor, welcome to the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. Hello, Sue. Thank you so much for inviting us and to be on your show. It's an absolute pleasure. (laughs) Noemi, you have some connection with the handmade product community, don't you? That's true, Sue. Yes, because by day we run our podcast agency with my husband, Gabor. And by night and during the weekends, I'm a hobby artist. I make handmade collages on paper and hand-sewn collages on canvas. So this is my go-to relaxation procedure in the evening after a hard day work. That's what I do in my free time. I had a couple of exhibitions in Europe, especially in, in Cyprus and in Italy, group exhibitions, and I really enjoy them before the pandemic. And hopefully I can continue with them in the future too. I love that you're doing them still on the side because don't you just get that feeling of just going and making something? It's so fulfilling, but it has some type of health benefits for us. Just the act of creating. Absolutely. It's helped me just rewind and just relax in the evening. And I enjoy listening to audiobooks while I'm doing making collages. So, you know, I'm in bed and doing collages, listening to audiobooks or music. So it's just like, yes, that's the me time for me. Yes. Okay, so I start the show in a little bit of a different way. We've been doing it this way all these years, and it really relates to the audience and helps them get to know you in a little bit of a different way, and that is through a motivational candle. Are you guys doing one candle or two candles? We do two candles. We have different candles. (laughs) Okay, good. All right, wonderful. So we're going to hear about each of your candles, what they look like, and then a motivational quote or saying or something that inspires you that gives us another look at who you are. I'm going to let you guys take control and decide who goes first. I go first. My motivational candle is blue. I love the color of blue because I think it represents, it's a calming color and it represents loyalty, responsibility, intelligence. And I was always loved with blue. In all my life, I can see I have like blue earrings, <laughs> all shades of blue, like my favorite. So that's why it's the blue candle. And my motivation in a quote is just keep going. And I went through a lot and we went through a lot in the past five years. I lost many people close to me, my family. That was my motto all the way along, to just keep going. And that's my motto in my personal life and in the business as well. So just keep going. Well, my sympathy and heart goes out to you. It's never easy to have loss like that for sure. So I have to say that I can't have a comment like that and not address it in that way. I think a lot of us over these last few years can relate to that as well. And you kept going. Wonderful. Love your candle. Okay, Gabor, your turn. I picked white. You should say this represent. For me, it's simplicity. It's honesty, purity, honesty. Purity, honesty. And yeah. the, the motto is done is better than perfect. We can go deeper that it's nothing done, really, but it's done is better than perfect. So just start up something and go for it before you're ready. That's, I think, that's the way. Just jump in or you can delay forever. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I think also this is really important for our listeners who are makers. When you're a hobby, you can tinker with whatever you're doing forever. But if you're making things to sell, at some point it has to be done and you have to like limit your production time or you're just going to keep going and you're going to never make money because you're putting so much time into a product versus making a second one so that you can sell two instead of one. The whole point of handmade is some slight imperfections. One is different than another. 
colors vary, all of that. That's the beauty of handmade as well. Yeah. yeah, you can make exactly the same one. I mean, exactly handmade, like with my collages. I feel the same way. They all, all the time, just uniqueness all around them. Yeah, and I think for me, just an example, I usually bring up, it's like logo. I think especially for like someone like an artistic mind or maybe a handmade, just like this creative mind, just like, okay, we need a logo for our business. And then it's going to take weeks maybe months <laughs> to get that logo and uh, without the logo you can't start a business which is not true just pick a logo and then go for it uh, usually what i say absolutely i mean i know that everyone listening can relate to that what's the business name going to be what are my brand colors going to be i can't start until i do this and this and this and this and i like to teach people that don't even do all those things right away. First thing you want to do is validate that your product will sell because what if you're thinking that you're going to be selling, I don't know, your prints or something, but then you find out later that what people are really loving from you is something totally different. If you would have started and named it off of that original product, you may have to rework it all anyway. So validation before you really get started in that manner is a good idea too. But yeah. Excellent, excellent. You can see it hit like a thread with me, right? <laughs> <laughs> to talk about that. But let's move on to the topic today. And now you guys are going to understand why this topic exists. And that is, we all know podcasting is growing and growing. Gosh, when I first started, there were so many of you who didn't even know what a podcast was. I would say I was a podcaster and you'd like, there'd be a glaze in people's eyes. <laughs> you know, I'm talking <laughs> 2015. I mean, some people knew, lots of people didn't yet, but now it continues to grow and grow and grow on a bigger and bigger scale. And I'll tell you, over the course of time, I've had people like, I'll attend conferences and now people are listening to the show and they'll be like, Sue, I'm going to start a podcast. I'm going to start a podcast. And I'm like, great, because I never want to tell people not to. So I'll ask you, as a handmade creator, where do you think hosting a podcast would fall in the whole realm of things? Is it a good idea? Is it not a good idea? I'll give my opinion, of course, too, because that never stops me. But I'm wondering what you guys think. <laughs> you know, it actually depends. But our honest opinion is that start podcast guesting before you host a podcast. It's much easier, less stress. And it would cost you less money, less organization, uh, less trouble to be on other people's podcasts and other experts' podcasts than actually start a completely unique podcast from scratch. We know it's a hard procedure and it's a hard job and not everybody knows that, but it is a hard job to run a podcast. So my honest opinion, like I'm myself right now, I wouldn't start one, <laughs> but I love being on other host podcasts. Just to start a podcast... You can do it yourself, obviously. You can edit the episode and you have to think about weekly or bi-weekly episodes, which, again, that's effort to bring in guests, come up with topics, obviously editing the show if you want, or you can go raw. But I'm not sure if someone that unexperienced and the shows today are like pretty enjoyable. So usually if I hear a show is like bad sound quality, I'm not going to listen to. So I believe more people are going to be that. It's usually the, the good podcast sounds like a radio now. So that's not like mm -hmm. some scratchy noises in the background. Right. So that's editing a show like you want to do like four episodes a month, let's say. That will cost around four to six hundred at a minimum to get those edited maybe get promotional material like on social media. But the other end, it can be reused for other content to help a business. That's something to consider. And I think the cutoff point when people realize it's just too much time and too much money, maybe it's somewhere like episode seven or 15, somewhere between. They're going to just drop it off. Yeah. yeah, we've seen that before. Yeah. Yeah, I see it all the time and I hear about it all the time. Like I'll find a podcast that I'm starting to like and then it's over, it's gone. I think really for handmade creators, if you are considering starting a podcast, and I don't want to spend too much time on this because I really want to focus on the guesting part, but you really need to decide what is that doing to enhance the goals of your business? So if you're a creator and you're looking to sell your product, 
how does a podcast as hosting a product funnel into your goals? Is it going to get you more customers? Where does that all land? So I think that's something to think about. Now, if you're thinking of moving into teaching more about your product, or you're looking at leveling your business with something else, then that would be different. But it goes back to the goal. I would say for 99% of people that are listening, a podcast is going to divert your attention away from sales and not the thing to do. It's my opinion only. Anyone who wants to talk about it with me, sign up for a discovery call and we can chat about it. (laughs) That would be fine (laughs) with me. But I don't want people to divert what they're trying to do and the goals that they have with their handmade product business to start a podcast. Now, having said that, guesting on a podcast, totally different story. So what would you guys say about that, being a guest on a podcast? Yeah, being a guest, you know, the proof of the pudding. I mean, we run our podcast agency, but we are guests as well on podcasts. And we are getting clients from those interviews more and more. So we can see it is working and we can see it's working with our clients too. So actually you can do it and you can be on other people's podcasts and even the host can be your ideal client or anyone from the audience and you can sell to them. So that's one part and that's important because at the end of the day, you share knowledge. That's so important when it comes to podcast guesting, but obviously you want to introduce your product to other people. If you are a crafter, maker, baker, artist and selling is going to be there as well. So yeah, that's the, an important yeah, point. And, and you don't have to come up with new ideas and new guests and new topics every week because it's easier, kind of repeatable, but you can tell on other shows. So that's... Uh, yeah, it's much easier, much easier to be a guest for sure. And I think more valuable for you too as a handmade creator. If again, your goal is to be selling your handmade products, and that's your whole goal. I also wanted to just say here, to be clear, let's share just very briefly, because we'll talk about it in the end also, but so everybody understands where your comments are based from, share a little bit about your business and what you're doing. Our business is Podcast Connections. It's a boutique podcast agency, and we work with a network of hosts from all around the world, mainly in the US, UK, Australia, and New Zealand, the English-speaking areas of the world, and we connect experts to podcasts. That's what we do. That's what we are good at. And we make the connection and we help to organize interviews. Yeah. So just like I was talking about in the beginning, if they have somebody who's a handmade creator or another topic that they think I might be interested in, they will approach me and say, hey, here's information about this particular person. Would you be interested? So this is the type of thing that then you also can do if you're looking at getting on some people's shows. So I'm thinking benefits here for a handmade creator are obviously exposure. You're getting the fact that you even exist out to a way broader audience than you could do if you're doing like a craft show or wherever you're currently selling, even being able to drive more people to your website, social, all of that. And there are lots of different types of podcasts available for you as well. You can go and share your expertise. You might want to train a little bit on something, perhaps. You may just be talking about your origin story, how you started and how you grew your business. There are also podcasts. If you go in and you look in some of the different categories, this show actually sits under the leisure slash craft category because that's how I intercept with more people who are handmade creators. But you'll see that there are podcasts that are not business development podcasts, just kind of lifestyle podcasts of quilters or painters or artists of all different sorts. Go take a look if you're unfamiliar with the different types of podcasts that are available, because these are all options to further explain where what you know and what you do could fit very well as a guest into these podcasts. Okay, so that was a long explanation. I got kind of into a tangent there. Noemi and Gabor, do you want to say anything else about that, just in terms of the benefit or the reason why someone might consider being a guest? Sure. It's a great networking opportunity as well. You have to build your professional network. And one of the best ways is to do podcast guesting. 
we see seen that like friendships were blooming, friendships and business relationship blooming after a podcast interview. And it's so good to see that we are sitting here in Cyprus, Europe and people connecting and doing business together or just working on projects together in other areas as well, as in the know, US, for example. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. yeah. As you mentioned, uh, like building more visibility or building your authority in your niche, that could be another benefit to going out or even lead generation. You can offer something for free, usually in the show notes, so people can visit your website, download some things. Not your product and not a discount code. No, 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 no. no. Because remember, podcasts go on forever. So never, ever on a podcast offer a free product or a discount without a deadline date, of course. But different types of downloads for lead acquisition, Gabor, like what? Like, what are you thinking? I have some ideas, but I want to hear what you're thinking. Yes, yeah, something to free. I don't know. It, it depends. Maybe if you do journals, right? So something productivity or on the journals. That could be one. Maybe a checklist. Yeah, checklist uh, where people can sign up mm-hmm. and download something and yeah, or send them an email. Right. Something virtual that's automatic. They sign up and they get it. It's 100% virtual, yes. Because, I mean, as you said, like, podcast episodes are evergreen. They're going to stay there forever. Or maybe something printable, because we are talking about here, handmade businesses. Oh, yeah, good idea. Sure. Something printable, maybe a card. You download it from the side of your side. That could be other one. Love that idea. Or if you're an artist also, you could download something that could be used as a screensaver, for example. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, on your phone or your desktop, like lots of creative ideas. But again, nothing that is going to cost you money in perpetuity, (laughs) right? (laughs) And the best idea is something that they click the button, you have it set up on the back end that it automatically delivers. So you really don't have to worry about it, but you have a new subscriber for your email list. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And that we've been talking about email a a lot on the show lately. So people who have been listening for even just a few episodes know all about that conversation. All right. So let's get into the goods. Let's talk about if there are people here who are thinking, hmm, I never thought about that before, but I have no idea how I would get started. What would you do and how would you advise somebody who is now considering being a guest on a show? What do you do? What are your next steps? So the idea is, yes, I want to do it. Now what? (laughs) <laughs> now you have to actually target your most obvious niche first. What, what podcast do your ideal clients listen to? You have to figure that out because that's really important. And for example, artists, you're looking for art podcasts or crafters, makers, like handmade related podcasts. There are loads of them online and iTunes is your friend. So you can do a lot of research. That's what we do in our business too. That's the most important part. Start your research. Start listening to podcasts and to episodes and have that knowledge what they are all about. So you have first you have to figure this out. That's the most important. Yes. And another idea I'm thinking that just came up to me now. I hope you don't mind if I interrupt you sometimes and back and forth. No, 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 no. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. I'm thinking, you know how there are a lot of podcasts that are location based? Like let's say someone's in a suburb of Atlanta. It may not be a podcast that's talking about handmade crafts, but it's talking about Atlanta and you're in Atlanta and you do craft shows there all the time. That would be a great place because those would be potentially your target customers. If it's a show based in Atlanta on cigars, maybe not, you know, but if it's just overall consumers or things that are going on in Atlanta or things to love about the city, then it would be a show. So look locally too. So topics who the audience is, and locality. Yeah, that's what I wanted to mention. That's why search for podcasts, search for shows for local businesses in your city, in your area. Focus on them because you have to know them as well. It's important. Right. And what do you say about shows that don't take guests yet? You know, I'm always looking, I'm not going to go out and look to be on someone else's show if I'm listening to their show and they never have guests. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you have to check that if it's a solo or not. Is it worth approaching them anyway? Because maybe yes. they would. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's always worth to approach anyone from our experience. Yeah, do that. I mean, we had podcasters before. They said, it's like, you know, I never had guests before, but now you approach me. It's like, why not? Let's start with guests. 
And since then, you know, they are having guests. So yeah, even check back later. It's happened before we sent out to someone who was just a solo and had an idea. It's like, oh, that sounds great topic. I don't know about, but my audience want to hear about it. Mm-hmm. So that's how, I think it was she, she started having guests once in a while. So yeah. Or maybe just keep it on a list for a separate, later <laughs> separate list. check back. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they're going to get lists. Yeah. Yeah. And people switch up shows all the time. Look, I used to be a hundred percent guests, you know, and now I'm switching it up a little bit and I've gone back and forth over the course of the years. So you just never know. So, all right. So we create a list, best place, probably go on into iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts, look in the different categories, but category lists only give you the top podcasts. So don't just look there, look further down and search by what do you say? Keywords is the best way? Yeah, you can search keywords. Or even if you leave iTunes, you can search like top podcast in on Google. Mm-hmm. And then there are site listings. It's like, oh, my favorite, maybe 25 or maybe 50 favorite podcasts in this country. Handmade in, podcast or podcast handmade. or art podcast or yeah. anything. Yeah. So we have our list. Let's just say to make this easy, five to 10. Target five to 10. Yes. That sound good just to start, just to get a feel for it and see if you like doing it and you, you know, how it goes. All right. So that, that's the first step is looking for the shows that you would want to be on. Now, what do we do? Maybe mentioned or not, but you need a couple of topics. So you just think about what would you like to talk about? Maybe that's the best way to start. It's like, how do I help my audience? So what can I tell them? What can I teach them? Because you are also running a business, so you can t- uh, you can think about yourself as a business. So you can talk about your business. How did you start it? Maybe your handmade business. How did you grow it? And maybe you're a seller on, let's say, another channel. Like you are selling on Etsy, you are selling on eBay, Amazon, or you have a Shopify store. So you have another one as a seller on those platforms. If these podcasts are like, how can I have them? So that's the main. I would think then that different topics fit different podcasts too. Like if you have a shop on Etsy and you have a lot of experience on Etsy, maybe you want to go and talk with some people who have Etsy type podcasts. And I know for a fact, because I've just been on a couple, that they want people who have experience with that platform in particular. Shopify, same thing. Now, that wouldn't be necessarily the best topic if you're looking at connecting up with someone who talks about people locally, but how you started your business and that you're in the community and maybe even shouting out other services and providers in the community who helped you as you built your business, that could be something that's really good for local. So your topics change also based on the shows that you are pitching to. I'm putting the word out there, pitching. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the key that's the key exactly. yeah okay so we've got our target list of podcasts we have some topics that we think would be relevant and good then what what's the next step a short break here to hear from our sponsor yes it's possible increase your sales without adding a single customer how you ask by offering personalization with your products Wrap a cake box with a ribbon saying, happy 30th birthday, Annie. Or add a special message and date to wedding or party favors for an extra meaningful touch. Where else can you get customization with a creatively spelled name or fine packaging that includes a saying whose meaning is known to a select two? Not only are customers willing to pay for these special touches, they'll tell their friends and word will spread about your company and products. You can create personalized ribbons and labels in seconds. Make just one or thousands without waiting weeks or having to spend money to order yards and yards. Print words in any language or font. Add logos, images, even photos. Perfect for branding or adding ingredient and flavor labels too. For more information, go to theribbonprintcompany.com. If you have these podcasts, so let's see what they were talking about before. You can try, figure out a way. How could you connect? How could you add more value to them? Right? If they previously talk about something similar or maybe connected topics, try to just build up and put it in your pitch. So it's like, hey, you were talking about this. I really love that show. And I can 
talk about a little bit more or different angle maybe that could be one or if you don't find that you just bring up those topic pitch would go through email Yes, it can go through email, but there are podcasts where there is an application form you have to fill out, detailed application form, so the hosts know about you and what you do up front, so you can apply that way. So go to the website and see if they have something. Yes, and they specify it, like when they have a website and there's a podcast page on their website, so they specify you can apply to be a guest here. So you just click on it and fill out the lengthy forms. Usually they are yeah, quite long but detailed, so they collect as much information as they can about you. If there's no application form, there's obviously, you can email them and send them your pitch or send them your one-pager. That's also really popular to prepare a one-pager for yourself and for your business. And that would include also your bio, your just a headshot, topics, talking points, and social links. It, like on a one-pager, but you can put that in an email as well and email it to the host too. It always depends what the host wants and what's their preference. Yeah. So a one page, I know people are not going to be familiar with this. So one page is just a single sheet. It has probably your picture. I'd say for you guys, probably a picture of your products, maybe a little bit, something in there, but very, you know, just a little bit on the top. Then all your contact information, kind of a little bio about you. The topics you can talk about, right? And social media links. I think that's kind of what's included. Oh, and if there are a couple of testimonials, you can include those in there too. Yeah, if you can put that there too. Yeah, that's a good idea. So that's everything is included on one page. But you can always send an email as well. If you don't have your one page already, no worries. You can still send an email to anyone. I mean, yes, they will read it or yeah. not. So. Yeah, I mean, I've had guests on the show that don't have uh, one sheet. They send me an email. They tell me why they would like to be on the show, a little bit about what they do. I, from a podcaster perspective, try to figure out the angle. What is going to be valuable to you guys who are listening? What are you going to get out of it? Because they, of course, want the visibility, as would you, right? But I have to be loyal to you as a listener. So think about that with your pitch is what is the value going to be for the people who are listening to their show? You position and you phrase things that way of use to them. I can't tell you how many pitches I get every single day where obviously people have never listened to the show. They have no idea who my audience is. And I've gotten to the point now where I don't even reply to some of them because it's just such a joke. Like it's a fill in the blank. They did no research. I'm on a list somewhere or something and that's it. It's crazy. Yeah, we know about it. Like one of our clients is also a podcast host and she's running like an e-commerce podcast. And she got emails about people from like for yoga instructors and stuff. So it's like, why don't you just, you know, have, listen to that podcast or just read the introduction on iTunes, what that podcast is all about, because it's so important and rude. Just waste other people's time with your emails if they're not the right match for you. Right. That's why I started deleting them. I don't even respond. <laughs> Actually, it just came up for the idea. You mentioned yoga. So it's, so how do you craft these emails? That, that could be a, a one, a little bit example. So something like selling essential oils and yoga studios or maybe massage therapists. That could be, I think, like a good client, so the good type of shows. So you can do something like, how do you set the mood with different type of fragrances? That could be maybe a topic. So you just put it there. Make it interesting, yeah. personalize it, be unique, creative. I mean, you know, the artists, crafters, makers, you are all creative people. So just come up with creative ideas about how you can attract that whole yeah. stand. Make your topics more interesting and unique. Uniqueness is so important. Again, it's just like, how can you help those listeners? So how could you help them? What can you teach them? Maybe so that's the way to think. Right. Totally agree. And, you know, the more work someone takes off of my shoulders, the more interested I am. If they've already thought of a topic. Maybe they thought of a topic I didn't even think of. And I'm like, yeah, I've never talked about that before. And that would be really interesting to the show. Do you remember, Noemi, a couple of years ago now, I'm like, I want to do something really fun for Christmas. Like, I don't want it to be business because we're in the holidays. And then one of the shows actually landed on Christmas Day, right? And you're like, let me give this some thought because it was way out of line with what I normally do. 
And you brought me Heidi. Yes, our favorite British writer. (laughs) I know. And she's been now on two Christmas episodes with two of her books. So like thinking in that way, I would have never thought about that before. But I gave you the idea and you came back with to me with the perfect solution. (laughs) (laughs) I have all her books stacked in my bedroom. (laughs) Same here. I love it. Yeah, I just read her latest book now. (laughs) Oh, I haven't gotten that one yet. I have a big backlog, but it's coming. Because I won't read Christmas books if it's out of the season. So I'm reading all of the non-Christmas books. Yeah. And then the Christmas books have to wait until like November. Yeah. Now you have to focus on the summer one because this is a good one as well. (laughs) All right. Will do. All right. So we send the email. Then let's just fast forward. You wait for a response. If you don't get a response in a couple of days, follow up again. They might not have seen the email start to try and develop a relationship a little bit with them. And now someone says, yes, I would love to invite you onto the show. And so every single show has different ways of setting up. Like I have my certain process. So you would just follow whatever directions they would tell you for the show. What would your advice be? Because people are going to be nervous, right? Some podcasts are audio only. Some are video and audio. Some are video while they're recording, but they only actually do the audio. And you'll know that by having researched the shows, the different shows. But what's your advice to people who are anxious? They wanted to do it, but now all of a sudden they've got a booking and they're like, oh no. (laughs) (laughs) Now I'm actually going to be a guest. Any (laughs) advice for preparation and mental mindset work or, or what? What do you say to that? Obviously, try to, before you go on an interview on that day, I think just go through your topics and talking points and just sit down and think about what you're going to say. You can make notes and you can put up on your wall or the way to help you. You don't have to nail it. It's, it's not about like just wing everything. Be prepared, even if it's a conversation. You always have to be prepared because it gives you comfort and it gives you security. So as you're more prepared, you're getting more relaxed. And when you get in touch with podcasts, try to focus on the smaller one, middle-sized ones. Don't go for the biggest ones because when you make mistakes or because we all do make mistakes on shows and we are not perfect for the first time or for the second time, just practice in, on smaller shows and work it in your niche and you're, gonna, you're going to be fine, but you have to practice like one after the other and don't expect like a huge follower number or sales number after your very first interview because it's not going to happen, obviously. You might be lucky and you get sales or something out of it, but you just have to be consistent and keep doing it. So that's why it's good to start with smaller podcasts, middle-sized podcasts and just keep doing them. And you get into the practice, into the habit, and you're just getting better and better show by show. Right. And also, this is just like attracting anybody else to your business. They might not be in the position right now where they need what you sell, but now you've got them in your ecosphere. So if they've come over, let's say at the end of the show, because usually they will ask you, well, how can people get in touch with you, which you're going to see demonstrated at the end of this show. (laughs) And if you've listened to the other podcasts, everyone does that. So the listeners have linkage to you if they want to. They come over to your website. Maybe you've offered a freebie, as Gabor was talking about, or they come over to your website and you have 10% off your first order, whatever it is. Now they're on your email list, right? But remember, this is just like anything else. You've gotten them in the top of your funnel, and now it's the regular communication. It's them being on social with you. It's all of that that leads them into buying the sale. So don't get discouraged if you're on a show and you don't get any sales, you've gotten people in and to know you. So that's really important. And I think also at the very end, give some thought to where you want to send people. And the one thing I don't like, you tell me how you guys feel about this. When people rattle off a whole list of everything that they do and you can't remember anything. So if you have the same name on everything, like let's say Anne's Jewelry, okay? I'm Anne'sJewelry.com. I'm Anne's Jewelry on Facebook, Instagram, wherever. Okay, that's easy. I can remember Anne's Jewelry. Because remember, listeners aren't necessarily sitting with a pen and paper to capture all this information. They're out walking, they're folding laundry, 
Maybe people are in production. I'm thinking a lot of you guys are producing things while you're listening to this. So make it something that's memorable enough because Truth be told, not many people go back to the show notes. They're there and they're available, but the majority of people won't. So give a lot of thought to where do you want to send them that's memorable. Don't be like, it's andsjewelry.com on the website. It's Anne's dash jewelry on Facebook. It's at Anne's dash dash jewelry on Instagram. Because then people get lost, like blurry. So something very clear. Any other suggestions for as you're signing off what to do? Yeah, I think that could work. Or even if you want to track your performance or podcast, you can make a landing page. Let's say angularly.com or a slash podcasts or free, something like that. So a landing page and you can see the people coming through there. So that could be a way to track your success. Yeah. That's podcasting 2.0. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little bit hard to track, but it's possible. But if you're working with someone who helps you find guesting opportunities, lots of times they'll help you set that type of thing up. So if you have no idea what we're talking about, you know, it depends on whether you're doing it yourself, which you actually absolutely can, or if you're doing it through someone who's helping you find the guests, they can also help you. Many of them can setting those things up. And then anything else about during the podcast interview? Anything we missed? Just to mention some technical stuff. Also important. Yeah. So being on a quiet place, like in a room in an office, so it's not in the car, not at the airport, not in a taxi, not in an Uber, not in a restaurant. That's a no. It's a quiet place. And technically, you need some kind of microphone, which is not your phone or not your PC. You can have it under $50 or under 100 You can have a decent microphone for podcasting. For video, you can have a light. And don't, don't forget to plug it in, as I did. Um, <laughs> and, and it's gone off. <laughs> Before we started. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so headphones, that's one. Just for the sake of the quality of the show. Yeah. You know what I have found also, though, because I don't want you guys to feel inhibited either if you're a guest. You shouldn't do this as you're a host, but if you're a guest, I found that the iPhone earbuds with the little mic is excellent. In fact, sometimes I found that the mic that's in the room is not as good of quality as the earbuds. So nice to have both of those available. Don't forget to charge it. So yeah, it. <laughs> charge everything up so <laughs> before the interview. <laughs> or you can put your earbuds into the computer too. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So... Anything else for the setup and preparing and? Yeah, if you can do like we have here in our home office, like cushions and soft furnishing and everything and carpets, because it makes the sound much better and no echo at all. And so that's important. So hopefully there's no echo. Hopefully there's no echo here either. <laughs> No, it, it sounds great. And honestly, some people will go even into a closet. That's not yeah, good for video. No. <laughs> but otherwise, if you're not doing video, just some small room, the more soft things around you, also the better. But don't freak out about all this setup stuff. Have a mic or Apple earbuds, because those are the best in terms of like the more portable mic. Get in a room that's a little bit softer. I don't know how else to say it. Or adding pillows, like you said, bring in a bunch yeah. of pillows from your whole house. Again, if it's not video or you could just throw them on the floor probably right that's yeah. what we're doing right now yeah <laughs> i see pillows on the couch behind you but i don't see anything on the floor they always there but we do have a couple of them on the, on the floor <laughs> <laughs> aha <laughs> okay anything else about the actual setup part that we need to cover i think when you get all this ready i think you are just good to go i mm. mean it's nothing special to get started yeah, I think you just get ready, turn your phone off or take it out of your yeah. office or this place because, or, and shut down everything on your computer, LinkedIn messages, Facebook alerts, anything that would disturb. Yeah, you don't want beeps, buzzes, any of that as a distraction. Lots of times the host will kind of do a little run through with you too, just to make sure that you've remembered to do that. And heaven forbid it doesn't, that's the way it goes. Like it is what it is. Don't even worry about it. Do as the best you can to prepare. 
but don't get freaked out about that part and make that be a barrier for you doing this, I guess is my point. All right. So excellent podcast interview. You get off your first of all, so relieved that it's over your first one, but you're really <laughs> excited. And now all the work is on the host side for editing, getting it all up, et cetera. Then what? Keep continuing. Yeah. yeah so Re do, rinse and repeat rinse and a repeat. couple of times. <laughs> Get on more shows. And then the very first one that you did may air sometimes the very next week. Sometimes it might not air for three months or so. But really important to do is when the show airs, most of the time they'll tell you. I've had one recently that didn't even tell me that it aired. But most of the time they'll tell you. They'll also, like, we will send graphics to our guests so that they'll be able to promote it. But don't miss this step. Just because you now have been on somebody's show, it's the polite and right thing to do to help promote the show. I'll be promoting all my shows. I send guests graphics. You guys, of course, know this. And as a guest, you should also be promoting with your audience. First off, it builds credibility for you. And it also leads more people to the show, which is really a thank you to the host. You know, you hear on all podcasts, you know, please rate and review the show. And when people say that, that's because they're trying to get more listeners. And so as being invited to, as a guest, you know, like when you are invited to a party, what do you do when you leave? You say, thank you. It was so much fun. You know, whatever. Sharing the podcast is like your thank you to the host. So remember to do that also. And then once that's done, then your job is done with that whole podcast, <laughs> right? <laughs> and now you probably would have some in play. Like we're talking about rinse and repeat, go through the process again. That's right. You might be offered to be on two or three and they'll all be in different stages based on timing of when the actual interview is going to take place and then when it actually airs. But just don't forget to do all of these parts. Yeah, exactly. It's, as you mentioned, it, it's... Just building the credibility and authority. That's an idea. So we can take a screenshot now. So we are on your podcast. So we can take a screenshot and post it on social media. We were just talking about Sue. Yeah. And invited to the show. So that, exactly. that's another one. Is this like, is like a teaser. And then yeah. you're going to send the graphics. And I'm going to put on LinkedIn and Facebook. So yeah, and I'm creating content. And you helped me to create content. So I don't have bother with it because you already created cool content and graphics for us. And just use that. And not only once, but you post it now and you can post it in like two weeks time, a month time as well. So, Right, because remember that show lives on forever. And if you really like what you produced, you can also ask to put it on your website. And what you'd get then is you could create your own image so it's in line with your branding if you wanted to. Or you could use one of the images that they gave you. And then what would happen is they don't give you the audio file. We as podcast hosts own all of our audio. What you'd have is a link to your show on your website. So I don't know of anybody who wouldn't want to do that because that gives more listeners and more attention to the show as well. And it gives you credibility. You know how people will put like in the news sections on the websites, things like that. So that's an opportunity for you as well. Yeah. yeah, we give that idea. We give that advice to our clients as well. And more and more are accepting this. And they are preparing a website for all the shows they were on because it's a win-win situation for them, for the hosts, backlink building, everything. Yeah, actually, I think a couple of our clients just made a list like in the media, media. So there's a full list of podcasts. It looks like with their own branding, but it looks like a podcast page actually on your website, but it's like on different shows. And then you can click on it and listen to maybe on a media player or listen to the host website directly. Yeah. So yeah, that's a little bit. Right. So just use the content. Okay, so let's wind this down here with a summary from you as to the value of being a guest on a podcast and any final words in that front that you would have for everyone who's listening. That's obvious. As we mentioned, it's give you the authority, that credibility you were speaking. And obviously, don't forget, you're delivering value to other people's listeners. So they have to come to you if you want to know more about you, your product, and find out more about you in the longer term. That's a way. So it's okay. I think we mentioned the link building as well. Yes. Um, so you get backlink from show notes. You're getting visibility. You network. With your network. 
maybe you go on a show and then you can wholesale to someone uh, because they're running a store. And these are evergreen, as we've said several times. So the work that you're putting in isn't for a one and done situation. I have people coming back and maybe you're a first time listener and this is the first show you've ever heard and you're liking what you're hearing. So you're like, well, what else is in that podcast? And then you go back and you look at different titles and Mm -hmm. you listen to different things. And that will happen with your show too, when you're in the lineup for someone else's podcast. So that's also the value of being on multiple shows because it just keeps building over time. And where can our listeners go to learn more about you? The most important place is our website, which is podcastconnections.co. So that's the best place to visit us. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for that. And this has been really fabulous because I know, I mean, everyone's hearing about podcasts like we talked about in the beginning. And for this industry in particular, I'm thinking people are like, they're either going all in for the wrong reasons, thinking I'm going to start a podcast, you know, without really (laughs) thinking it through and then stopping within the first seven episodes, or they've never ever thought about the opportunity that could be available for guesting. So this is a great conversation, opens up our minds to different things that we can be doing. And all of the steps that you've shared in terms of how to get started, how to make contact, how to prepare, how to make it live on in the future and thank the host, none of that is hard to do. You just have to decide to do it. That's it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is the hosts are people too. You know, I mean, get connected with them on LinkedIn. For example, this is a great platform for us. Get in touch with them. Tell them that you like the episode, one of their episodes, or why do you like their shows? And get in touch with them on LinkedIn or on Facebook and get start talking with them. It's so important to get to make connections. And it's just not about your business and not talk about yourself, but ask the host, do you accept guests right now? Or I do this and that. Would you be interested in having me on your show? Just ask them. I mean, we are all people. We just communicate with each other and then we find out if they want you or not. Yeah. The value of relationships is everything. It goes so underutilized and it's just so powerful. So absolutely agree. All right. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate your time today being on the show. And I think we've opened up some minds of people about podcasting. So have a great day. Thank Thank you, you. Sue. Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye. So what do you think? Is this something you'd like to pursue? Being a guest on a podcast? If you're saying yes, I want to know about that. DM me with your thoughts. I'd love to hear. Before you move on to your next activity today, make sure to get your name on the list for at least one Gift Biz Bash. You can see the dates and times for upcoming sessions and get signed up over at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash bash. And if you're enjoying the podcast and would like to show support, a rating and review would be wonderful. It helps spread the word about the show too, so it's a great way to pay it forward. There's also another way to get something tangible in exchange for your support. Visit my merch shop for a wide variety of inspirational items like mugs, journals, water bottles, and more, featuring logos, images, and quotes to inspire you throughout your day. Makes a great gift, too. And we've just added some new products for the season. Which is my favorite design right now? It's a toss-up with that gorgeous lemonade image and a quote about refreshing and the beautiful butterfly design. What's yours? Turnaround is quick and the quality is top-notch. Nothing but the best for you. Take a look at all the options at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash shop. All proceeds from these purchases helps me offset the costs of producing this podcast. And now, be safe and well, and I'll see you again next time on the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. I want to make sure you're familiar with my free Facebook group called Gift Biz Breeze. It's a place where we all gather and are a community to support each other. I've got a really fun post in there that's my favorite of the week, I have to say, where I invite all of you to share what you're doing, to show pictures of your product to show what you're working on for the week, to get reaction from other people 
and just for fun because we all get to see the wonderful products that everybody in the community is making. My favorite post every single week, without doubt. Wait, what? Aren't you part of the group already? If not, make sure to jump over to Facebook and search for the group Gift Biz Breeze. Don't delay. Come join us in Gift Biz Breeze. Today, 